the system between the animals and the carbon cycle is linked to one another, wherein without the other component, the process or cycles would be rendered obsolete. Basically, the carbon cycle is a process to which it transports much needed carbon in different sectors and areas on the earth. With the entities in our world needing to be supplied with carbon, proper cycling that enables balance to be distributed among them should be the case to continue their functions. Now, what fauna exactly brings to the table is that the process of respiration of animals contributes to the distribution of carbon in our atmosphere. Respiration is one of the many contributions that fauna presents to the overall carbon cycle. Another concept would be the animal's carbon compounds, composition of their dead bodies, feces, contributing to the overall carbon cycle. A notable contribution of animals would be their access to fruits from trees as their food to which these said fruits fall down from trees into soil and contributes to the amount of carbon. Materials that are left behind by said animals have amounts of carbon that is now being transferred to the soil. Studies show that the areas wherein high tree and animal diversity will be more efficient in capturing resources and producing biomass. Now, what isn't it for the fauna on the other hand? What would they attain from the carbon cycle? The explanation would be simply that the carbon in the carbon cycle would be reused again through photosynthesis to oxygen and is generated and be used by the animals once more. Without the proper balance in the carbon cycle, fauna would be also be affected. These concepts brings balance with one another, to which if one lacks, prominent effects to the other would be the case. Forests without fauna to coincide with it would not be balanced at all because the repository for the carbon would be non-existent. These cases do prevail due to circumstances such as extinction. Therefore, we should learn and understand the importance of both the carbon cycle and fauna with one another. The term anthropogenic means any effect, activity, or object that comes from human activity. And the factors that has an effect on the organisms in the ecosystem are called stressors. And if we put them together, we get anthropogenic stressors. Human activities that has an effect on the organisms in the ecosystems. Vital functions such as reproduction, nutrition, growth, and habitat. There are four major groups of anthropogenic stressors. Pollution can be caused by discharges from industrial sites such as waste and the burning of the materials. The introduction of other species, also known as invasive species. The destruction of habitat due to industrialization and farming hunting, fishing, and livestock. Pollution can negatively affect carbon cycle because the excess unprocessed carbon is left in the atmosphere. Pollution can also cause toxicity and acidification, which could significantly reduce the population of species or accumulate in some species and make them unsafe for predators to eat. The contamination of the environment's potential to obstruct chemical communication has also been observed in crustaceans is important to their social behavior. Chemical pollutants such as phthalates and metals such as mercury and cadmium can also have the ability to impair reproduction, immune, growth, and cognitive functions of animals. Another is the destruction of habitats can be caused by pollution, mining, logging, construction of industrial sites. When animals lose their natural habitat, the population declines and eventually becomes extinct. Lastly, hunting, fishing, and livestock is also one of the major causes of species extinction. It negatively affects ecosystems because they can significantly reduce their population, and selective extraction or hunting can disrupt the balance of ecosystem. An example of this is lobster fishing, where smaller ones are returned to the sea and the larger legal-sized ones are sold, while the oversized ones are returned to sea. Because of this, smaller and larger surviving males have more opportunity for reproduction, affecting diversity. Farming animals also produce polluting gases such as methane and ammonia through digestion, and farming practices cause soil degradation. Now, we will talk about invasive species, what they are, what dangers do they pose, 
how they spread, and why are they called invasive. The following animation will be drawn by Jesus Emmanuel Ika Gurangan and is narrated by Miguel Mancinido. Invasive species is a seemingly non-threatening term, but these invaders may be large or small has a devastating effect on wildlife. By definition, invasive species are organisms that are not native to a particular area. Invasive species are the leading threat to wildlife having affected 42% of endangered species. Not only that, invasive species also bring great economic and environmental harm to their invaded location. This proves that in addition to wildlife being effective, our communities are also at risk from invasive species. The impacts of invasive species on our natural ecosystems and economy cost billions of dollars each year, and many commercial and agricultural activities depend on a healthy native ecosystem. So what makes a species invasive in the first place? An invasive species can be any kind of living organism, may it be plant, insect, fish, etc. that is not from that ecosystem and disrupts everything in it. In addition, species that grow, reproduce, and spread aggressively with potential to cause harm are considered invasive. Invasive species, having brought potential harm to its invaded ecosystem, are actually spread by human activities unintentionally by people, things we use every day, and traveling and by traveling around the world. For example, ships could carry aquatic organisms like zebra mussels and grass carp in their ballast water, while smaller boats could carry invasive species such as sea lamprey and northern water milfoil on their propellers. In addition, higher temperature and changes in rain patterns caused by climate change will enable some invasive species to move into new areas. After fleeing, that said invasive species would then move into a new area, therefore making them invasive. Epigenetics is the study of the other factors that influence the expression of a genotype into a particular phenotype. Epigenetics is the study of changes in gene function that are heritable phenotype changes which do not entail a change in DNA sequence. For instance, mice have a sequence of DNA that code for the agouti gene, which dictates the fur color of mice by working on the melatonin receptors at the hair follicle to influence the amount of pigment in the fur. The expression of this gene leads to dark fur. However, for a brief period during the growth of each hair, a change occurs in the level of pigmentation leading to a yellow banding. This has the effect of creating varying degrees of gray-brown fur in normal mice. For another example, dogs who are derived from wolves are one of the first animals to be the subject of domestication and is suggested to be an essentially epigenetically based process. Evolution suggests that after frequent communication and interaction of humans and wolves of the same ecological niche, they reduced stress and aggression as the first step of the domestication process. Positive social behaviors enhance epigenetically HGCR expression via increased serotonin and subsequently increased nerve growth factor levels. This leads to lower cortisol levels that promote social learning and cognitive inhibition. Therefore, these epigenetically lowered cortisol levels of humans and wolves allowed for non-violent interactions that over time allowed for the emergence of the descendants of wolves. Epigenetic changes can help determine whether genes are turned on or off, and in certain cells, influence the production of protein, ensuring that necessary proteins are produced. Proteins that promote bone growth are not produced in muscle cells. Patterns of epigenetic modification may vary among individuals, and different tissues within an individual and even different cells. DNA methylation is a common type of epigenetic modification which involves attaching small molecules called metal groups, each consisting of one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms to segments of DNA. No protein is produced from a particular gene when metal groups are added upon it, which makes the gene turn off 
or silent. Gene expression can be controlled through the action of repressor proteins that attach to the silencer regions of the DNA. These epigenetic changes may last through cell divisions for the duration of the cell's life and may also last for multiple generations even though they do not involve changes in the underlying DNA sequence of an organism. Thank you for watching our video on invasive species.